kept anybody in here? Has he kept anybody in here? Hallelujah. Glory to God. His word is an anchor to our souls. Oh, praise his name. Well, welcome to the first Sunday in the year 2021. God is faithful. Hallelujah. What glory!
Hallelujah. He stilled the enemy. Hallelujah. The prophet David, the King David, the prophet David said, I will praise thee, O God, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I praise the Lord for being saved. I praise the Lord for being on his side. Hallelujah. All sides going down except the side of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Them old songs mean something. Everything going down but the word of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad to be saved. I'm glad to be on the Lord's side. I'm glad to have a provider, a protector, a healer, a deliverer, a leader, a guide. I'm glad to have the Lord in my life. Hallelujah. And I praise him for it. Brothers and sisters, I will... I never believed in New Year's resolutions. I always come out of one year going into the next year with the intent that I'm going to serve God harder than I served him the year before. Amen. I come into this new year with a new perspective. I praise the Lord that he allowed us to see this year. But brothers and sisters, the only thing I'm looking for after this is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I encourage myself many times. I have to praise the Lord because of what I see, what I hear. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I thank God Jesus is soon to come. And I bless his name on today. Hallelujah. The Bible declares whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. And I love him today. I love him today. I love him today. I call on your name. <laughs> I call on your name. <laughs> the only name that saves. The name that makes a way. I call on your name. I call on your name, the name that heals my pain, the name that has all rain. Nothing can stand before you. Yours is the power. You are brave. I call on your name. I call on your name. The only name that saves. The name that makes a way. I call on your name. for his track record. <laughs> Amen. We never thought we would be in a, have a Red Sea experience where we're told that we're not going to make it, but hallelujah, God still splits Red Seas. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I go on record today to say that God has delivered. God has healed. God has brought us through. Amen. I praise the Lord for prayer. <laughs> I praise the Lord for the power of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. When we can't get to our loved ones, the Bible declares that we take God's word and send his word there. Hallelujah. His word don't bring healing. His word is healing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I praise him for his manifold blessings upon my life. Thursday morning, 3 o'clock, He opened my eyes and I, I just started praising God for where he brought me from. I thought about when I was in California and God had saved me and I made a decision to honor God so I left where I was and I was on the streets and I, ever, I will never ever forget Lionel and Sherelle Brooks from the church where God saved me, the Royal Family Church of God in Christ, how they took me in. Amen. I praise him because he did not let me stay there where I would have wound up on the streets pushing a cart, maybe, or staying up under a bridge with the skies a covering. I praise him for that. I look back and I praise him for not letting me marry the wrong person. Amen. And I thought, I said, he took me through all of what I went through just to bring me home and give me my wife. I thank God for Sister Jessie. I thank God for my wife on this morning. Hallelujah. The Bible declares that he that finds a wife finds a good thing. But in actuality, when God gives you something, you ain't got to look too far. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He may not give us what we want, but he'll definitely give us what we need. You believe me? Say amen. amen. And I praise him for that. Amen. We come into this new year uncertain, but yet the saints are certain. It's uncertainty all around us, but God has already sh showed us <laughs> that in the mix, they call it a pandemic, but in actuality, it is a plague allowed by God to bring this nation to repentance. Amen. Amen. Call it what you want to. But brothers and sisters, it don't make no difference. They, they telling these lies and using human pigs, not guinea pigs, but human pigs. Amen. Hallelujah. There's only one vaccine. His name is Jesus. And you don't get that vaccine until you repent. Show sure enough. If I ask a question, how many believe the Bible? Just about everybody in here would raise their hand. But when I, I, I if we really deep down understand what the, what the Bible is that God allowed us to have, we do not have power. Amen. Power is not the Bible. The Bible, it, the Bible is power. It's God's power. The scripture teaches us that he hastens his word to perform it. This word is power. Hallelujah. Listen, brothers and sisters. Everything we see and all of that that we don't see, he made it by his word. And I believe it. I believe it. And it's not going to change. Psalms 119, verse 89, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. And I thank God, amen, praise God, even in the midst of all of this confusion, there's peace for the saints of God. We come out of one year going into this year here with the confidence that God is going to take care of his own. Question is whether or not we want to be his own. And then when he make us his own, whether we want to stay his own. Amen. Hallelujah. This past few weeks I've been 
And it would do you good, no brag, but just just a fact. It would do you good to go on the website and listen to the 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 the, the series of messages about being ready, cause it was dealing in 2011 with what we actually going through now. Amen. It would do you good. Hallelujah. I thank God for the word of God. I thank God for the, the compass that he put in this earth here so that we would have a guide to walk by. Psalms 119, huh? 119, 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a, a light unto my path. And I'm told in Proverbs 4, the ponder the path of my feet. There are different paths now. Amen. You know, we're at Psalms 2. The heathen are raging and the people are imagining vain things. Hallelujah. But God rules, brothers and sisters. God rules. The fastest growing religion in America now is the religion called atheism. Did y'all know that? Men and women are professing that religion now. It's not Islam, it's atheism. And it's coming out of the colleges. They're churning out unbelievers right and left. But the proof of God is in Romans chapter 1. Hallelujah. The invisible things of this earth are clearly seen by the things that are made, giving us the direction that there's somebody that created this thing. Last I read the scripture, I am the first and I am the last. Hallelujah. You get me now or you, or you forever lost? That's what he said now. That's what he said. Brothers and sisters, we're at a time now, we, we literally are at a crossroad. I'm not concerned about who's in a White House. Never have been. Glory to God. Reach over and get your Bibles and turn with me, please, to 1 John chapter 3. I thank God for Minister Green and Missionary Collins, the Deacon Brothers, and all of my precious sons and daughters. Y'all know I'm your daddy. I ain't your father, I'm your daddy. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know why? Because it never escapes my attention that I'm held accountable for the men and the women and the boys and the girls that God gives me the pastor. I'm held accountable for that. Amen. And brothers and sisters, that scares me. You know why? Because I have to stay on my knees. I have to keep trusting God to give me what to say, give me what to do concerning those that he has put in my care. Amen. Hallelujah. And Paul the Apostle in the 13th chapter of the book of Hebrews said, that, Amen, give, I got to give an account of this ministry. Amen. In 1 John chapter 3, I just want one verse for right now. 1 John 3 and verse 22. Whatsoever we ask, Whatsoever we ask, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Pleasing in his sight. That's not two things. That's actually the, the latter part of that verse hinges off of that first part. You can't please him unless you know what pleases him. And we get what pleases him where? Out of his word, his commandments. We walk in the commandments of the Lord. The great commandment is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, our soul, and our might. And the second is great, just like the first, to love our neighbor as ourselves. Notice, notice. Our prayers are only answered through what we're reading here. I want us to come into this new year understanding that Pastor Douglas' only goal is to get every single one of us right here. 
to the point where we live by God's word and we do nothing that he, that's not pleasing to him. Hallelujah. Therefore, when we come together to pray or as individuals when we pray, the power of God is resident to meet the need. 1 John 5 and 14, amen, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heals us. And if we know that he heals us, we know that we have our petition. But how are we going to know his will except we get in his word? Listen, brothers and sisters, this casual attention to given to God's word, hallelujah, let me inform you, we are go, we're being tried now, but we're going to be tried even more. I'm going on record today saying this. Hallelujah. I live in expectancy. Definitely live in expectancy. Because as judgment falls all over this nation and the world for that matter, I thank God that it signals that Jesus Christ is soon to come. That is my hope, Sister Collins. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, friend or foe, that's my hope. He's coming. Hallelujah. The world is playing catch up. Why? God said it was going to happen and it's happening. Y'all think this thing we got now is something. Give it a little bit more time. Hallelujah. Remember 2 Timothy 1 and 7. God had given his saints spirit of fear. Hallelujah. But he gave us to fear him. Uh, sure enough. I don't preach no subject. The message deals the last three words in that verse. In his sight. Doing what's right in his sight. Doing what's pleasing in his sight. God is looking at us. Amen. Now, Proverbs 15 and 3, the eyes of the Lord in every place, beholding the evil and the good. So he sees everything. He knows everything. And remember now, we're being tried. This world is being tried. Huh? Why? He's trying the hearts of the people. Amen. Now, we, in, we, we are right now where Jeremiah tell, warned us. Jeremiah 17 and 9, the heart is deceitful above all things. The spirit is corrupt. When he talks about the heart, he's not talking about what's pumping his blood here. He's talking about the spirit that's in man. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Well, that 10th verse say, I, the Lord, I search the heart. And brother, I try the reins. In other words, the direction you're going in, I'm going to warn you going in the wrong direction and try to turn you to the right direction. I've searched the heart, and I try the reins of every man to give everyone according to his doings. Show sure enough. So, amen, praise God. It makes no difference what they're doing in this government here. Remember now, God took a man, a black man, Put that, made that black man in his day the power over the whole earth. He thought he was something. But brother, in the book of Daniel, God gave that man a dream, scared the hell out of him. And when God, God's man came in there, when the, the hoodoo workers couldn't get a man, tell a man what he dreamed. When the hoodoo workers, the suit sales, the psychics couldn't tell a man what he dreamed, God gave it to Daniel. Why did God give Daniel that? He showed Daniel that dream and gave him the interpretation because Daniel in Daniel 1 and 8, when they took him down in Babylon, he purposed in his heart, I'm going to stand for God. Hallelujah. In Daniel 2, 28, when Daniel came in, he gave the man, the, told the man what he dreamed now, and then he gave him interpretation, and then he told him, brother, there is, huh? Daniel 2, 28, there's a God in heaven. Hallelujah. Why bless his name? The government ain't running nothing. No nation, no leader of a nation is running anything. God gives power, and when they don't do right by God, God put them down. The man didn't get it. 
God gave him a second dream. Hallelujah, of a gigantic tree. And that thing was, amen, pray God, over the whole earth. It, it went from one end of this earth to the other, and that thing had power. Everything was nourished from it. And when that God, man, came in there, he told him, praise God, he told Daniel what he saw, and then God showed Daniel what he saw. And he's seen a, a watcher, and I want to remind y'all, we got a watcher too. A watcher came down from heaven and said, hew down the tree, cut it down. Leave the stump in the roots. Hallelujah. Daniel, Daniel 4, and, 4 and 10. Hey man, leave it out, cut it down. Daniel 4 and 17, cut it down. But praise God, that man, uh, listen, brothers and sisters, you want to see how God deals with sin, study that man. Daniel gave him the interpretation of that tree and what that watcher said. And it says in Daniel 4 and 17 that the decree, the decree is from the watcher. You know what a decree is? It's law. You know what that meant? You know what that meant? His, de his, his doom was sealed. I'm going to make an example out of you. And Daniel, Daniel 4 and 27, he said, Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee. Don't nobody want to hear God's man. I said in Sunday school this morning, when you get familiar with your pastor, then your pastor, I don't care what he preaches, it'll go over your head. Why? You're familiar with him. He ain't going to say nothing nice. He ain't going to say, he ain't going to give me nothing to encourage me. If you're going over the cliff and I'm standing at the edge of the cliff trying to stop you, would you say that I'm trying to help you or hurt you? Daniel warned him, Sister Jewel, wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto you and break off your sin by righteousness and show some mercy to the poor. One year later, that within one year came out the other. And brothers and sisters, God put him down. And sure enough, and the tree, when the, tree, when the fruit falls, it don't roll too far from the tree either. He put his son down because of his foolishness. Hallelujah. That's why I'm not overly upset. Amen. Pray God. Now, now you black folks, especially you black folks, and you Caucasians, amen, praise the Lord, that's got you politically minded, you're wrong. It don't make no difference who's in that White House. God will is going to be done in this nation here. And I told y'all before, this nation cannot stand. No, sir. Psalms 9 and 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell and every nation that forget God. This atheistic, you know, men without praying, they put people in office and we're getting the fruit from it now. It's showing up. We've been getting that fruit, brothers and sisters, for the last 50 years. It ain't just not started. Every man that's got that office played his part on bringing this nation. Amen. Getting, getting us. We are, God is angry with us. As a nation, he's angry with us. Huh? Psalms 9 and 7, huh? Psalm 7 and verse 11, God judges the righteous, but he's angry at the wicked every day. Judgment is falling. Why? For we can repent. Humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. I got a shield about me. If you're saved and you're living by God's word, you got a shield about you. And that ain't going to change. Hallelujah. We obey the government. But my trust is in God and God alone. Hallelujah. He reminded me of back when we was in the book of Daniel, studying the book of Daniel. And I was at home. It was during the winter time. And I was studying. And I heard a voice say, I'm going to kill you. And brothers and sisters, I'm talking about what I know, I experienced. And that thing had its hands around my throat. And I was losing consciousness. And I heard the voice. <laughs> Psalms 91. And I trembled to get over there. And I started reading, amen. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide up under the shadow of the Almighty. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God and him will I trust. And as I read and begin to read, I, amen, praise the Lord, my eyes fell on God's word. And then when it get to, got to the last verse, and now with long life will I satisfy him, show him my salvation. 
that thing loose me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. See, God let us come into here. He'll let us experience things to show us his power. The devil can't kill me <laughs> until God get through with me. Hallelujah. Notice our text, brothers and sisters, because it's dealing with saints who have, notice, who have never been saints in their life. They were idolatrous worshipers. And then precious John, I love that man. He began to tell them, okay, the reason why you need to keep God's word. And remember, he's watching you. You're living in his sight. Keep his word. Do what's pleasing to him. How? Through keeping his word. And then every prayer you need, he's going he's gonna to give you, he's going to meet that need. Amen now. Hallelujah. Whatever you got going on, whatever you brought out of, of, of last year, you need to put it back there. Because this year, uh, my son said this on, on, the, on the conference line. People praying now that they ain't never prayed. Saints and sinners. Hallelujah. Folks searching God's word now more than they ever have. That needs to be resident in our life. We should have been doing it. You know, God gave me this. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, all of this quoting about 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. There's a whole lot of quoting. Amen. But there ain't a whole lot of doing of 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. You know, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. And that ain't happening. And pray. And that ain't happening a whole lot. And seek my face. And that ain't happening a whole lot. And turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Notice that word T-H-E-N. It's up on condition. When God answers our prayer, even when we ain't in there all the way, it's because of mercy. But when we're walking in God's word, we come with that confidence that he told us in Hebrews 2. We can come boldly before the throne of grace. Why? Because our lives line up with the word. Well, bless his name. Notice what he said now. Notice what he said. Doing what's pleasing in his sight, realizing that he's watching me. He's watching me. And everything I do, everything I say, every, everything I think is being, huh, is being written down. Jot this down, brothers and sisters. Job 16, verse 19. Job said, my witness is in heaven and my record is on high. He's watching me. And we are being tried. Every one of us. We're being tried. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Israel was marked, the kings were marked by what they, how they either reverenced God or they had irreverence for God, wasn't they now? When you read about a new king, it always says, so and so he did that which was right in God's sight. Or this one did that which was evil in God's sight. You notice there's no in-between. You can't be half right and half wrong. You can't be half good and half evil. The only way we can be good is, uh, is to do good and only good. The Bible declares he ordained us unto good works. Uh, Ephesians 2 and 10, didn't he not? Didn't he not? Paul gives us instructions and gives us encouragement to obey God's word. Didn't he not? Didn't he not? Hallelujah. But they were mocked by either they, they rejected God, Ahab. Let me back up. The one that introduced Israel to idolatry after they got in that promised land was Solomon. Sure enough, then Ahab. And then you, you run, go through a run about two or three evil kings and then somebody like Jehoshaphat will show up or Hezekiah. But I love that 34th chapter of 2 Chronicles. There was born out in the name of Josiah. Came into this thing, amen, praise God, when he was eight years old. And brothers and sisters, in the 10th year of that boy's reign, God put in his heart to put out all of the idolatry. Pull down the, amen, praise God, they altars. Kill the priest of Baal. And you read that, put it down, read it, amen, praise God. He went down the line. Brothers and sisters, he cleaned Judah and Jerusalem up. Hallelujah. And I, you know what gets me, amen, praise the Lord, the house of God had been broke down, ran down. 
And sure enough. And then the king, amen, praise the Lord, he said, now y'all take that money in the house of God and you give it to the builders and let them restore God's house. And while they was there, they found the book of the law and they brought it before that boy. And when they began to read, he wept and he tore his clothes. Now listen, brothers and sisters, God never puts us in authority without calling those upon us into authority. I'm not sitting in the hot seat by myself. They had what we call a convocation. <laughs> and he commanded and demanded that everybody obey the law or death. Hallelujah. His mark was that he, he did that which was right in God's eyes. Hallelujah. Now that's the wicked, but I thank God, amen, praise God. His eyes is over us on a, in a positive note. Remember now, 2 Chronicles 16 and 9, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong, not on behalf, but in behalf of those whose hearts are perfect toward him. I, I want 1 John 3, 7. Hallelujah. How do we know we right? We practice righteousness. 1 John 3 and verse 7. Read. Little children. Little children. Let no man deceive Let you. no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness. He that does righteousness. Is righteous. He that does what, church? He that do, talk to me like you in here. He that does what? You he makes us right in order for us to do right. Why? He's watching us. Read, son. Even as he is righteous. Even as God is righteous. Jesus is righteous, and them that follow him, them that he called, he called us to righteousness, didn't he now? Huh? Well, we on the grace. Well, Titus 2 and 11 said the grace of God, which brings salvation, has appeared unto all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, and that we should live soberly and godly and righteously in this, righteously in this present world. Why? Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. When we're looking for him, we're going to do what's pleasing in his sight. We're going to live right. Show sure enough. The benefit is when we live right, then he says in our text that we have what we ask for because we're living for him. I mean, listen, you ain't got to have a Harvard degree to figure this out. Hallelujah. Educated folks and stuff don't get it. Many of them don't get it. Hallelujah. They think it's just us. Ain't no God. That, that's the new, the new religion now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I, I hey, brothers and sisters, I told y'all before and I'm telling you now, if you got children in the in the school system, you better watch what they teaching them. You 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 grill them when they come up, come home. Show sure enough. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I, I, I'm going to take one sidetrack and then we're going to move on. Amen. Praise the Lord. Later on, my wife, didn't, I guess she didn't tell me because she know I'm finna, I'm finna act up. But when my baby, my when Elizabeth was in high school, they showed a movie called Schindler's List about the Holocaust. Amen. And how they killed them. They made them strip down. Well, you would think that the, the people on PBS would, would, would put a shadow over that, but they didn't. You can see everything, men and women. They sent a, a permission slip home for the, te the teacher did to show them that. And my wife said no, and they showed it anyhow. And then they tried to belittle her. Amen now. And thank God for my wife. Hallelujah. Show sure enough. Thank God for her. She handled it and told me later on because he finna act a monkey. No, I'm going to give you what to do. I'm going to tell you where you at and I'm going to remind you principals and you teachers, I'm paying your salary. You work for me. Hallelujah. Let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on. Hallelujah. God answers our prayer. Because we do what's pleasing in his sight. Amen. Now, nah. we, we, we have a choice, 
but we've surrendered our right to do what we want to do when we want to do it. It's all about Jesus Christ. We ain't got to agree on that, but the truth is our breath is in his hand. Now, when we get to this point where we understand that we, we, when we live in his sight and that we do what's pleasing to him, then we're walking in the steps of Jesus Christ. Ain't we not? Ain't we not? John 8, 29, I do always those things that please him. Why? He's with me. And then Jesus promised us that he's with us. Do you know that song we said about take the Lord along with you? Everywhere you go. You may not sing it, but if you're saved, that's, a, that's rele relevant in your life. Amen now. Hallelujah. That, that's an that's a evident token in your life. How many of y'all have worked on a job where when they find out you're saved, they, they cuss more than they ever would? Talk to me, somebody. How many of y'all worked on a job, especially men, where they talk all filthy and under women's dresses and all of that? Come on, hold your hand up, brothers. Hold your hand up, ladies. Some of y'all work with me, and y'all know. Then, then they got the audacity. Tell me, excuse me. No, you said that because that was in your heart. Hallelujah. And remember now, hallelujah, any time we're in a situation like, wasting like that, God give us the opportunity to tell the truth. Hallelujah. What you said to me and what you said around me, I'm going to put some on your mind and let you think about it. And show sure now. Why? Your soul is involved in this. Hallelujah. And, and, and it never ceased to amaze me that the very ones that come back and ask you to pray for them is those very ones. Why? They see in your life what they want, but they coward. They don't want it. They don't want to go through what it took to get it. Y'all with me this morning? Stay with me. I said on a positive note, the message is both negative and positive. The positive part is his eyes is on us. I want 1 Peter 3.10. I want that right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 3 and verse 10. Somebody, anybody. Read. In this the children of God. I no, 1 Peter 3.10. For he that will love life. Now notice now, he that will love life and see, and good, see days. good days, let him do what? Refrain his tongue let from Let him evil. do what, church? The, the, amen. But the, 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 the problem is in the tongue. Amen. Now, we don't know how to talk to folks. And old folks say, if you ain't got nothing good, say, keep your mouth shut. I'll tell you one thing it'll show sure keep you from cussing, it'll show sure keep you from threatening. It'll show sure not. Just keep your mouth. Even a fool is considered to be wise, huh? When he keeps his mouth shut, he may be the biggest fool in town, but amen, praise God. But if he don't give his opinion, you won't know how ignorant he is. Uh, hold that. Hold, hold, hold you guys some. How many of y'all ever read Psalm 14 and 1? The fool is said in his heart that there is no God. Somebody, get me that. Psalms 14. In verse 1, y'all take a deep breath. We're just about through. Psalm 14 and verse 1, read. The fool has said in his heart, read. The fool has said in his heart. I can't hear you. Read. The fool has said in his heart. The fool has said in where, church? In in what is God trying? Read. There is no God. There is no God. Watch it. Watch it. Read. They are corrupt. They are corrupt. They have done about. Now this is work. the fool. Now he'll live any kind of way. She will live any kind of way. Do anything. Say anything. Why? There is no God. No God. No accountability. No God. Accountability. No judgment. Read it. They have done abominable work. Read. There is none that doeth good. Read. The Lord looked down from heaven. Now above. notice who's looking now. And where is he looking from? Heaven. Trying the, the, the actions of men. Read it. A 
upon the children of men Read. to see if there were any that did understand. Lord have mercy. And seek God. Lord have mercy. Now listen, brothers and sisters. When we don't understand and we see God and see God, then God let things happen. Show sure enough to wake us up. So Brother Lester read it at the end of the communion, uh, that passage and stuff. He said, if we would judge ourselves, then would we not be judged? God won't hurt, judge us, but he will chasten us. And then if that chasing don't turn you from what you're doing, then you go out into judgment. Uh, sure enough. Read. They all... They are all gone aside. Read. They are all together become filthy. Read. There is none that doeth good. No. No, not, not one. Not one. You know, I, I'm reminded of what God amen, told Ezekiel. He said, I sought for a man, not men. I sought for one man, amen, praise the Lord, to stand in the gap and make up the head. And I found none. In Jeremiah 5 and 1. He told Jeremiah, run throughout the city, brother, and see if there'll be anybody, anybody that's taking heed to the warning. All right. Has he not given us instructions as a nation on who he is and what he requires? Talk to me, somebody. This nation is the instrument that God used to sit in the word of God over the seas. But we need somebody over there to come back over here and preach the hell out of us. We got a lot of preaching and teaching, but we ain't talking about the never dying soul where men go when they leave this world here. Read. Four. Have all the workers of iniquity no, no knowledge? No knowledge, read. Who eat up my people read. they eat bread and call not upon the Lord? No, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it, look this way, every one of you. He wasn't talking about them nations around Israel. He was talking about those in authority that had a little cloud power in authority that was misusing the people up under them. It, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The elders. The ones that told me teaching the people the word of the Lord. Now the, I said the, the, the fruit don't fall far from the tree because that same spirit came down through the, the ages and it was still present when the Lord Jesus Christ stepped on the scene. Woe unto you scribes, you Pharisees, you hypocrites. You lay heavy burdens on men and won't move them with one of your fingers. Woe unto you. But notice now, read the book, read the book. Five, there were they in great fear. Great fear. For God is in the generation of the righteous. To do what? To do what, church? Why is he in the generation of the righteous? In order to take care of them, to watch over them, and then when he judges, it's just like when they was down in Egypt. Judgment fell, but nothing touched them, them Goshenites over there. Y'all with me this morning? Listen, God did something supernatural when he put darkness down there. There was light over there where them folks was. Amen. Look this way, y'all. When he said, the scripture says light, it wasn't talking about them having candles. It was talking about it shining in the daytime over there and the rest of Egypt was in darkness. Amen. Come on out of here. Thank you, Lord. I don't believe it. Well, that's that's why you in the condition you're in now. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was so dark in Egypt that they couldn't find no fire to light a light a, a, a torch with. Amen. Now, amen. but down there in Ghost and praise God, they amen. Pray God. I'll tell you one thing. He gave them a holiday, didn't he? Amen. Didn't he give them a holiday? Huh? You can't work in the dark. Amen. You can't slave in the dark. God, God, cut him loose. Why well, bless his name? Read it. Six. Ye have shamed the counsel of the poor. Oh my God. Can you see why God is judging us in this nation here? Amen. Poor folks ain't got a chance. Hey, y'all look this way here. And the middle class is being done away with. Show sure up. Hallelujah. Well, everybody got to depend on the government. And when the government got that much control, they can tell you what you can and can't do. It ain't about politics. 
is about wickedness in the hearts of men. But ah, I thank God for 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. His eyes over up to show himself strong. Amen now. Y'all look this way here. Nobody's got an excuse. Nobody. Save or, or unsaved. Nobody's got an excuse. You know why? Because God has put in every one of us an, in, an innate knowledge of who he really is. We have to talk ourselves into not believing that he's real. It's sure enough now. Hallelujah. You call it a conscience. But in actuality, it's that part that God blew in man. Man became a conscious being, Sister Alice. He began to think. Sure enough. Hallelujah. I, I, I want Amos 6 and, and 6. I want that right now. Y'all stay with me now. Amos 6 and verse 6, he asks a question, who, who now? Well, uh, how shall I, how can I, read Amos 6 and verse 6. That drink wine in bowls and anoint themselves Ain't, with cheese. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Micah, Micah, Micah 6. Where really shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the most high? Micah 6. Come on six. with it. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord read. and bow myself before the high God? Read the who God? God. The who God? High God. Now you notice that's what he told Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 4 and verse 32. He said, but that man testified and he said, pray God that God put me down and pray God. But after, after that year, he may pray God. He gave my reason back and he made a decree. And brother, he said that God is the high God, the most high God. Hallelujah. He puts up one and takes another down. He puts men on thrones. And take them off thrones. Amen. He establishes governments. Amen. And then praise God when they don't obey God. They are no more. Read it. Shall I come before him with burnt offering? Read. With calves. Now notice now. He's talking about offering to God now. Amen. Read it. With calves of a year old. Read. Will the Lord be pleased Read. with thousands now, now notice of lambs? Now. He, he's trying to figure out what God, what pleases God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Read it. Will God, will the Lord be pleased? Will the with, Lord be pleased? With thousands of rams. Lord, have mercy. Or Read. With, or with ten thousands of rivers Read. of oil. Shall I give my firstborn Lord, for my Lord, have mercy. This man knows that his soul is in jeopardy. Yeah. Why? We reading it right here. Shall I give my firstborn for the transgression of my soul. Read it, son, read it. The fruit of my body for the, the of sin my, of my soul. For the sin of my soul. Read. He had showed thee, O oh man, what is that good. That is right there. He showed us what is what? Good. Read. And what does the Lord require What thee? does he require? What does he demand from us? Since he done showed us what he want us to do. Read. But to do justly. Do justly. And to love mercy. To love mercy. And to walk humbly with thy God. Read. The Lord's voice cried unto now, the Now, city. here's the problem right here. Men's and men's of God are crying out. And the people ain't paying them no attention. We're trying to show you what's heading our way, but you don't want to hear it. I'm not telling you nothing for you to be afraid. I'm telling you this so that you can get rooted and grounded in God. Because as I said a few messages ago, what's overseas now is heading our way. They are brothers and sisters. I thank God that God would not leave us. Hallelujah. Daniel pro proclaimed that in the last days, God's people would do exploits. <laughs> what does that mean? They would be able to, to outdo the devil no matter how he come. They're not going to get scared. They go, amen now. I wonder what's going to happen. I ain't got to wonder what's happening. I already know what's coming. Praise God. My confidence is in God. Why? God has been taking care of me 63 years. And 63 years, not one time in those years that he failed. Amen. It's not in his vocabulary. Hallelujah. Read, he done showed your man what is good. And what do the Lord require? To do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. But the voice, the read, son. The Lord's voice cried unto the city. Read. And the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Now underline that in your Bible, please. The man of wisdom. The man of wisdom shall do what? See thy name. See his name. 
hear ye the rod. And hear the rod. And who has appointed it. What does that mean? Recognize God is the one that's judging and then get afraid of him enough to obey his word. Fools ain't just not started. Amen. Sister Alice, you ain't read nothing yet. I want Proverbs 22 and 3. I want that right now. Come on back with that, son. Come and give me that verse one more time. The Lord's voice. Read. Micah 6 and 9. The Lord's voice cried unto the city. The Lord's voice is warning us through the judgments that are falling in this, this, this state here. Amen. Just Louisiana. And, and dear God, I ain't too much on, on backing no, I ain't going to back no politician, but the government of this state here asked the preachers and the pastors to pray for him. Amen. And I said, dear God, we, we can do a little business. I, any man that'll humble himself, amen, like that, amen, and know and realize the predicament that this state is in, much less the nation, he ain't control, he ain't over no nation, he over us. And got enough nerve, amen, to call, amen, and send out a call for all of the, have a conference call with the preachers. Amen. Then, hey, I can respect him. Give me that verse one more time, Psalm. The, vo the Lord's voice, what? Crieth unto the city. One and a three. And the man of wisdom shall see the thy name. Hear ye the rod. Hear the rod. And who hath appointed it. Proverbs 22 and verse 3. Approved man. Oh, notice now we got a, a amen prayer. He talks about a, a wise man of wisdom. A prudent man is a wise man that got sense enough to know, brother, God, I, I ain't gonna make him mad. Show sure enough. I'm not gonna be found on the wrong side of this thing. Read, I, hey, I'm talking to saints this morning. It's cleanup time. Why? His eyes is on us. In his sight, we must we must be pleasing in his sight. But didn't Jesus do that for us? Yeah. But once we get over here, then that sweet smelling savor got to stay sweet, don't it? I don't want him looking on me, praise God, and being mad with me. I'm wearing his name, praise God. That's the same as a man or a woman, a married man or woman that's got somebody other than his wife or her husband. Hey. Ain't no blessing on her clothes, heaven. Amen. Read, daughter. A prudent, a prudent man will see what? The he foresees. Amen. He foresees. He, all it, he understands that judgment is coming. And what would that man do? He will hide himself. Himself but the fool. But the simple person. The path. simple is a fool. The, the, the simple person is a fool. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22. How long will you? Simple ones love simplicity. How long, and at least the scorn, and how long will you scorners love scorning? Huh? A prudent man will foresee the, give me that one. A prudent man will foresee the evil and hides himself. But the simple. But the simple passes on. And are punished. And are punished. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to give you this and with the. Ladies and gentlemen, you do what you want to. I ain't telling nobody what to do. Just like I wouldn't tell nobody how to vote or anything else like that. I ain't telling nobody what to do. I, 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 you know, Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 6, the last verse in there, he said, don't you be carried away with wise fables and, and oppositions of science, so-called. You read it, the last verse in, in 1 Timothy 6 and in, in 1 Timothy 6. I thank God for doctors. I thank God for people that are trying to alleviate. But I told you the only vaccine is repentance. It's sure enough. I'm gonna show you why. I won't yeah, everybody turn with me to Exodus 15. Because the same thing about being in his sight comes up. Exodus 15 and verse 26. God's man, God told Moses, but excuse me, God through Moses told these people. Give me that 26 verse. Exodus 15, 26. It, it read, said, read if thou would diligently hearken. If you would diligently hearken. To the voice of the Lord thy God. There's that voice again, Marcus. Sister Collins, there's that voice again. 
Hearken is equivalent to what the Lord Jesus Christ said. He that has an ear, let him hear. And notice he didn't say you do this every now and then. He said if you were diligent. How many know what diligence is? Being diligent in some diligent. It means that you continue in it. You continue in it and you continue in it and you continue. Jesus Christ told us if we continue in his word, we would know the truth and the truth would make us free. Read, son, read. And we'll do that which is right in his sight. Right in his sight. Read. And we'll give ear to his commandments. That is again, give ear to his commandments. Read. And keep all his statutes. And keep all of his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, Lord, which I have brought are upon. Are y'all reading this? A little child, if a little child was to read that verse down, and you ask him after he read it, who, who controlling the disease? A little child, let's say three, four years old, will tell you who's controlling the disease. Th those are spirits now. They are. They're spirits. They had Israel captive when the Lord Jesus Christ came. Those are spirits. Hallelujah. There's a blessing of obeying God and there's a curse. And Moses, knew, God already told Moses, you're not going over there. No, sir. You did not magnify and sanctify me in the eyes of the people. You're not going to the promised land. And so Moses giving his last address to these folks. Amen. Sure enough. Because I already know. He told him. He said, I already know. After my, my I'm gone, praise God. Y'all going to, you're going to go against God's word, but be sure. Your sin going to find you out. Read the book. Read the book. Diligent and keep all of his statutes and his. I will put none of these diseases upon thee. Read. Which I have brought upon the Egyptians. Who brought it upon the Egyptians? Talk to me, y'all. Talk to me. I ain't going to ask a question. I'm going to make a statement. Ain't nobody controlling nothing but God. And wait a minute. Israel is our example of how God blessed them when they obeyed God and how God cursed them when they disobeyed God. And so Israel, the nation Israel, as a whole, they suffered brutally, brutally Amen. because they had known truth and they turned a deaf ear. I want that verse one more time. If you were diligently hearkening to the voice of the Lord your God and do what and give, read, read. Exodus 15, 26, and said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God read. and will do that which is right in his sight read. and will give ear to his commandments. Read. And keep all his statues. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. Now, now hold it. Underline this last part in here. He's testifying now. For I am the Lord, your God. I, I, read it, son. Read it. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Ah. How many of y'all ever been healed? I'm talking about since you've been saved. How many of y'all been healed by the power of God? I'm not talking about no medicine. Amen. I'm, amen now. I'm talking about healed. Hallelujah. He's evidently working in our lives or he never would have healed us. And even the sinner got something in him that makes, if he cuts his finger, it begins to heal from the inside. Inside out. But when we are saved, the, the Holy Ghost magnifies that healing. Uh, sure enough. Don't he now? Hallelujah. When we're filled with God's spirit, we understand that God is with us. And because we know he's with us, we know we're not alone. And because we know we're not alone and we follow his instructions, we please him. And when we pray, when we pray, God answers our prayers. God does. And nobody else. This is my confidence, that verse right there. I know what to do, and I do it. And I don't fear. And show enough. Hallelujah.